Thank you, Brother Laz. Hello, everybody. Uh, we want to welcome you to our service this evening. We thank you so much for joining us. Uh, those of you who are in Corpus Christi and the Coastal Bend, we appreciate you. We so appreciate you that notwithstanding, we appreciate our brothers and sisters from around the world. Those of you who are in Asia and Africa, Europe, here in North America, Central America, South America, Australia, and the islands of the sea, we bless you. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you so very, very much. And perhaps we'll talk about it a little bit later, perhaps. But one brother in Serbia recently told me, said, I watch you every Sunday. One pastor. He said, my wife and I watch every Sunday. And uh, I don't think they have uh, shown that they were watching. But there are a lot of uh, those who are watching us. So we want to say thank you and give you a shout out. If you, if you don't mind, it, uh, maybe you could uh, put your name down and our moderator will let us know that you're watching. But we sure appreciate you. It's not a requirement, but thank you so very much. Uh, we just, we love you so much. We bless you. And we're just glad that we are here to worship the Lord together. Thank you so very much again for the fourth or fifth time. Thank you. Thank you for being here. So uh, the Bible tells us that, that, that every day is the day that we ought to worship the Lord and, and uh, bless his name. So we want to do that tonight. And, and I'm grateful that the praise team is here. And, uh, of course, I saw uh, some new faces up there and then some uh, familiar faces. I was going over to say hi to the musicians, and uh, they weren't up here yet. So I just thought I'd go down one time and not back again. It was so good to see you all as well. So let us pray. Uh, Father, you said that we ought to always pray and never give up, never lose heart, never be discouraged. So we want to just thank you so much for who you are. We want to thank you for what you have done in us and for us. We want to thank you that the works of God are forever. And those of us who have come to you, uh, we have come, Lord God, to be with you for, uh, forever and ever, uh, never to walk away again. We want to thank you for that. Regardless of difficulties in life, regardless of what we think we see, what we do see, we still continue to believe and trust in you. You are the Alpha, you are the Omega, you are the A, you are the Z. You are the first, you are the last. Lord God, we thank you so much. We bless you today as you hold us in your loving arms and as you care for us today. We thank you. We thank you that nothing the enemy plans against us will prosper. You said that no weapon formed against us. Anything the, e the evil one brings to do evil will not work against us. Why? Because you're watching over us. And the Bible says you watch over your word to perform it. Thank you so much for that. And that's true for every believer in this house and every believer outside this house. That is true for us all. So we thank you. We ask you to bless the praise and worship and the furtherance of this service. In Jesus' name, amen. Just The tomb is empty, he is not here, he lives in victory, I have seen the scars that pop my freedom, when you rise from the grave my shame stayed up, for these crimson stains your grace is sufficient.
a ring of solid gold, like a vow that is tested, like a covenant of old. And your love is enduring through the winter rain and beyond the horizon with mercy for today.
Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Amazing Father, thank you. Thank you for who you are and thank you for what you have done. And I thank you that by your spirit you are saying that you want to do something for each person here, special something. You want to move in their lives in a way that you are palpable, that they can reach out, as it were, and touch the Lord. That's what you want to do. You want a relationship with each one that is magnetic, that's full of joy and peace. Thank you, Lord. You want to give assurance to each one. You want to assure each person that you are with them no matter what. And so I pray tonight that each one who is here would reach out and touch you, that they would feel you. Thank you, Lord. We don't have to play games or tricks. But you want, you want us to, as it were, feel your breath against our face, our faces. You want us to, as it were, smell your cologne. <laughs> Thank you for your fragrance your sweet fragrance. You're just so amazing. You're just like, you're second to none. That's who you are. You're second to none. And so when we understand that you're number one, we'll start to experience all that you are. And Lord, some have entered into that closet space with you. Yes, some have already entered into that close closet space where they're experiencing you in new ways and, and are seeing new dimensions of your love. You said that so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So you didn't speak this word just to enter ears and go out ears. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for intimacy with you, intimacy with God. Thank you for intimacy with God. Thank you for separation, separation from the world and those things that are not God. Have mercy, O oh Lord, according to all of your loving kindnesses. And those who are in distress, those who are dealing with issues and problems that seem to be insurmountable, you said, then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. And he saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. That's who you are for these who are here. For those who are online, when you summoned Moses and Aaron to the tabernacle and all the elders to the tabernacle, for some reason, me dad and he dad didn't go. But what you did for all the other elders, you did it for those two brothers who stayed in the camp. They, weren't, they were not in the tabernacle of meeting, 
but they got what you gave the others. So we pray for those brothers and sisters who are not here tonight, that as you're blessing these who are in the tabernacle, those who came because you summoned them, you'll bless those who are back in the camp. Thank you for doing that. We ask you to heal everybody here. Like you did in your revivals, Lord. I remember always reading, you healed everybody. <laughs> and your fame went out to all the land. There's this carpenter from Nazareth healing folks, casting out demons. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you used to do it. Do it again. Do it again. Heal everybody here. Everybody. Whatever they came with, don't let them go home the same way. That's who you are. That's what you're able to do. And take away all of the, the strain on the mind that this world is bringing. And men, evil men are growing worse and worse imposters too. Don't let your people be a part of it. We love you. Bless them. I pray for intimacy. I pray that, that even tonight as they sleep or in other places, the same, that you would give them dreams of you, dreams of heavenly things. And I rebuke the devil in Jesus' name that he would come against your people while they are resting and come to torment them. Satan, we rebuke you in Jesus' name. You have no right, no authority, no pathway. We command you to leave. Leave their dreams in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, we pray for, for these who have given requests. We pray for Lois. Sister Andrea's mom, as she goes through soldier, sh shoulder surgery, and we ask you to give her quick healing and let her, let her go through this so easily, so easily. Heal her mom. Heal our brother Dan from this COVID. Lord God, thank you, Jesus. Heal him from COVID just like you did me, just like you did others here. Lord, even without the vaccine, you healed me, you healed others. Some didn't make it, but you saw fit to have us make it. And so we're gonna walk it out with you. So we thank you for our brother Dan, that you bring him through powerfully. And then we ask you to, to heal his brother-in-law, Al, of cancer and, and save him. Save him. Save him and heal him. Raise him up. Save him. That's the most important healing. Save him. And for Patricia, Lord God, for rededication and healing from cancer, we just thank you that Patricia totally rededicate to you Sometimes we lose our way. We lose our way. We come to you and we hear other voices, enticing voices. But turn around. Turn around. Have mercy. Have mercy on Patricia. We also pray for Dr. Carlene as she travels to Detroit, Michigan, for the, her, her first half marathon outside of the state. So we just pray that you would give her strength to finish, just like she's going to finish this salvific race with joy. Let her finish that one with joy. Yes, let her finish well. Let her finish well in the name of Jesus and just protect her and her daughter as they travel. Thank you for both of them, mom and daughter as they travel in the name of Jesus. And Lord, 
While we pray for these things, we pray also for uh, Ukraine. We ask you to have mercy and help. And I pray that you would, if anybody has a dream, let Vladimir Putin have a dream. Let him have a dream of, of what's going to happen to him one day if he doesn't repent, if he continues to do this evil. Let him have one. One of the greatest things in the world, one of the greatest things would be for us to hear that, that he got saved and he stopped his saber rattling and killing people. And do that for him. We pray for the Middle East. We pray that, that there will be peace in the Middle East. And I pray, firstly, that the church would know that truth doesn't take sides. We don't have to be for Mr. Netanyahu to be for Israel. We don't want massive killings of some people and great provisions for others. We want you to, to help. Help those people, those innocent people. Those, those women and children. And we know that Hamas has done atrocious things. And we're not for what they have done, but we pray that you would, would hear our prayer. As a little boy, we were taught that two wrongs don't make a right. Have mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, Lord. And we know all of these things are signs of the times. Hear our prayer. Save Israel out of her trouble. And save all those innocent ones. Oh God, have mercy upon us. Incline your, your ear to us and help us. And as the song says, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Don't pass Timmy by. Heal his mom be with his mom and enable him to go be with his mom and Sandy just enable them to, to be where they want to be and need to be while on others thou art calling do not pass us by in the name of Jesus we pray amen It's a good night, isn't it? It's wonderful to be in the presence of the Lord, and it's also wonderful to be in the presence of our brothers and sisters, right? You know what else is wonderful? Having our pastor back. Yeah. Yeah. Pastor, Pastor Stan, Sister Susan, they're all back in the house, or, or let's see, Sister Susan and Pastor are, let's see. Oh, yes, okay, I see you, Pastor Stan, he's here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Well, it's so good to see everyone. We have a quick birthday shout out before we release the kiddos. It says, happy sixth birthday to our Eli. You are already a mighty, hey, amen. 
You are already a mighty young man of God, and we can't wait to continue watching you grow in him. We are so proud of you and how you excel in first grade and in your piano lessons. You are a blessing and a wonderful friend. Hey, amen. Brother, son, and grandson, we love you. Sissy Ellison says, happy birthday, Eli Soros Rex. Mommy says, happy birthday, Bubba. Daddy says, happy birthday, Papacito. And the rest of us say, happy birthday, Eli. Dad's watching online tonight. All righty, kiddos, on that note, and our youth, you can go ahead and head out to your classes. God bless you. our first time guests. If we have any first time guests in the house, if you want to mind raising your hand, we'd love to see you, acknowledge you, say hello to you. Hey, it's great to have you here. We also have a gift for you. If you don't mind, keep your hands up. Great to have you here, brother. If, if there's anybody else in the house, if you want to mind just holding your hand up for a little while lo longer, the ushers have a gift card, for, uh, not a gift card, a gift for you and a card for you. But not a gift card. <laughs> oh, that's good. Thank you so much, Ushers. We appreciate you. <laughs> All right. We also have one more uh, birthday shout out as those gifts are being handed out. Uh, happy birthday to Zoe from several of the young adults. Yeah. Hey, hey. Well, thank you so much, first time guests, for being here. Let's go ahead and stand up, everybody, and greet one another.
Thank you so much, Sister Stephanie. We appreciate you all. If we could all find our seats. We appreciate it so much. We're going to head into our video announcements in just a few moments. We'll give everybody time to get settled. And then also, we'd like to let you know somebody is missing their keys. There's a little pink ring here. You don't have to come up to the front to give them. I'll give them, let's see, here to Brother Rini. And then you can sneak back at some point if they're yours. You'll know Brother Rini has them. And they're in safe, very capable hands, okay? All right. Let's go ahead and queue up the video announcements. Hello, Fellowship family. I'm Jennifer, and here are some announcements. This Thursday at 7 p.m. is prayer at the police station with Elder Henry Williams. Come and support our city, our state, and nation through prayer. Men, your monthly men's meeting is this Saturday, October the 19th. Breakfast and a hot cup of strong coffee will be ready for you at 8.30, and the meeting begins at 9 a.m. The next food pantry distribution day is Saturday, October the 19th, from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m., Come and receive if you can benefit from this blessing. Pastor Jackson is inviting all male teenagers of the fellowship for a movie night at his home on Saturday, October the 19th. There is enough space for 20 teens, so please RSVP to Pastor Jackson ASAP. Landscape Day is Saturday, October the 26th from 8 to 11 a.m. Sign up today in the foyer and let us know that we can expect you. Now, stay tuned for a special feature as we continue to celebrate our 38th church anniversary. See how we praise and worship our amazing God through the years. Victory is not just getting here. Sometimes we think, oh, I made it, you know, we, we get, no, that's not victory. Victory is when the enemy is giving you your best shot and you don't feel like praise. Yeah. And you say, I am not captured. I will not be held captive by my feelings. I will praise God. I will praise God.
38 years of ministry. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Pastor, as well, for your faithfulness. Sister Marva, we appreciate you both. Your faithfulness. Yeah. Amen. 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 On that note of 38 years of ministry, Pastor has asked that Pastor Stan and Sister Susan come and give us a brief uh, report on the trip. So if you don't mind. Amen. This is a good house. (laughs) So glad to be a part of this house. And the Lord has sent us to the nations, and we just got back from Serbia, and it was wonderful. You sent us, and God had them ready. Uh, He had us ready, but they were ready. And um, I think you're going to, you have to come to Global Impact the, I don't know when it is, I should know, (laughs) 27th. Okay, 27th, 27th, um, in the evening after. Uh, but come, because um, we were, we were uh, focusing in on the Roma people, but one of the things they pointed out to us was that at the conference, we had the Roma nation, we had Serbia, Serbians, and that's not always, they don't always come together, but they were there. And we also had people from Macedonia. We had people from Montenegro and Croatia and USA and Albania. And so God is bringing the church together all over the world. He's bringing his people together. And many of them, they've seen it in us and God's doing it in them. And they're excited. Uh, really, for the the Serbians to come together with the Roma is is big. It's very big, and so we also got invitations to two other nations, and God is actively working to set those opportunities up. So we trust the Lord will will open that door and let us go. Um, and they were so I can't tell everything. Uh, uh, I, I better let you talk. Because I, I'm a, you, tell what you, tell what you well, okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Pastor. They were just so hungry, and they were ready. They were, they were in a teaching position, in a learning position. And they had sent some scriptures that they wanted us to, uh, for our theme, and the scriptures to accompany our theme. And it was the supremacy of Christ. And I said, Pastor, we can preach any, any, any one of our messages. But the scripture really focused us in. And Pastor, pro, we, we primarily focused on being born of God. And uh, that Christ is the author of eternal salvation. And we had question and answer times, teaching times, and uh, message times. And they asked amazing questions. They asked probing questions, and God really brought them uh, understanding, and um, it it was just beautiful to see him moving and making us one, bringing us together, bringing us to that plumb line, you know, not being on this side or that side, but coming together in the truth, and so it's beautiful to be a part of that, and you help make that happen. All right. Thought you couldn't tell it all. <laughs> um, yeah, it was um, magnificent uh, the way everything worked out because we we had Q and A uh, continually. You know, we we give a message and um, at the end of uh, the night we we'd answer questions, and uh, the questions were very probing, and uh, I think we learned some things um, about how to do this, 
and uh, it was very uh, beneficial for us as well. And the nations that she was talking about that wanted to, uh, that were there, there were other nations there, and uh, were making invitations. Um, unfortunately, some of these nations have invited us before, but we never could get around to it. You know, uh, we were so busy. And I think at the time we were planning to get to them, COVID came along. And that just kind of squashed everything. But what has happened is we've discovered that although it was put on hold, all those doors are still open. And all the Balkan nations want us to be there and want to learn more about Christ. All right? Okay. Thank you both so much. Thank you, Pastor. Well, it's now that time in the service where we will receive our offering. So if you need an offering envelope, please raise your hand. We'll see to it that you get one. Thank you so much. We have three ways to give here at the fellowship. You can give, of course, here in person. You can go online to cccfellowship.com forward slash give. Or you can text us at 361-386-2565. And if you text the word keywords, you'll receive our giving options if you'd like to designate it to something specific. Okay, thank you so much. We'll give everybody uh, some time. Uh, please know that, that these offerings, the tithes, they're being used for kingdom work. Um, every every ounce of it, right? Kingdom work. It's about lifting up the name of Jesus. He's our message everywhere we go. That never changes. Uh, I've been on with Pastor on these trips. Never changes. It's consistent, right? And in the office, it's consistent. And so, also know that you're in a good house where if you need support, all you need to do is raise your hand. Right? If someone's not already there, just raise your hand. Yeah, and there's there's support there. We have great pastors, great leaders here. So thank you so much. Let's pray, and then we'll receive the offering. Father, thank you so much for an opportunity to give. Thank you for what you've done for us through Jesus Christ. And Lord, were you to not do one more thing for us, it would be all right. It would be just fine because you gave it all when you gave us your son. So we thank you, Jesus. We thank you for this opportunity to give back what you first gave. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Let's receive the tithes and the offerings, and the next voice you will hear will be that of Pastor Don bringing the word.
Amen. To come up there right now. <laughs> to all the electricity. Thank you so much, Brother Chris. Well, thank you so much. Uh, it's all that, or oh, it's me, huh? What did I do? Well, brother, brother Chris, maybe, maybe it's a little signal. Don't mess with him. <laughs> yeah, hasn't that night been wonderful? Yeah, from the praise and the worship, starting out, just been wonderful. And uh, boy, it's good to be home. It's, it's um, really wonderful to be home, more than you would probably know or think. It's just good to be with you. It's good to be with other brothers and sisters. Uh, nothing uh, 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 negative about that. Really good. Um, but it's always so wonderful to be here with you. I always remind people, too, where we go, brothers and sisters, that it is because of you that we're able to go. And uh, no, Something can be in your heart, but if people aren't giving, you're not going. <laughs> and so you make that possible. Thank you very, very much. I also want to say thank you. You can go ahead and start, man. Uh, I wanted to say also thanks to Sister Rose and, and your team for such a beautiful presentation. I walked in, it was kind of embarrassing when I walked in to see that young man up there preaching. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but he, was, he had a lot of movement. I, I never would have dreamed that he would have had such movements. And so when people say things like that, sometimes you have to believe people. Yes, so thank you very much for that. And uh, just good, good to be home. It's good to be home to see my wife doing, doing well. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much. And uh, there's a lot we can say, too. Um, I think we're going to do it at Global Impact on the 27th. <laughs> yes. And so we're, we're going to have a little different format for Global Impact this time. So I think you'll really enjoy it when you come uh, with Global Impact. I would like to say just uh, very briefly uh, that... It was so gratifying uh, being there in Serbia. It was so gratifying. It's so gratifying when you preach the gospel and you do everything you can to preach the gospel correctly. Yes. You, know, you do everything you can. You're not careless with the gospel and you meditate on it. You, you ask questions of those uh, that can be trusted. You, you do all those things. Not that, not, I'm not talking about you, those of you who can be trusted. I'm speaking of, of in the ministry, uh, those uh, pastors and leaders who have studied as well. And you're trying to always find the heart of God. And it is so wonderful because sometimes when you're sharing like this, you're sort of, um, you know, pushing the boundaries as it were, but not in a negative way. You're pushing them to show God's people what he has done for them. And sometimes we limit that. We're, we're afraid that we might uh, somehow commit error. And a lot of times in, when we, we travel, brothers and sisters aren't willing to fully embrace the message that we carry. And uh, it took some of us a little while as well. We just stayed here and then said, oh, wow, that is the truth of God. It's been, it was so exhilarating, so wonderful. I want to maybe share a little bit, uh, sort of in uh, that same vein, uh, I titled the message, The Presentation of the Gospel, and then I asked the question, what are our responsibilities uh, to God first, and what are our uh, responsibilities to our fellow man, or just everybody, I'm speaking of everybody, and then what are our responsibilities to believers, fellow believers. And th there's really one answer, and that is that we must give everybody the truth. And not the truth as I feel it, or the, the truth as I, uh, you know, like surmise uh, in my mental, by, uh, my mental faculties or through my mental faculties, but what has God revealed? What has God shown us? And, and that is not to be in what we call a subjective thing. 
Yeah, yeah. There, there is some good in the in the subjective that is in how I feel about it, how I receive it. But I want us to really speak uh, the uh, as much as it's possible the objective truth, what God is saying and what God means by what He's saying, and that's what you and I need to capture if we're going to affect change, the change that God wants us to affect in the world. We have talked a lot about that in in many, many messages about what God wanted. And decades ago, literally decades ago, we were saying a lot of the things that we just take for granted today. We, you know, oh, that's the truth or, or, oh, sure, we're doing that. But decades ago, it was not so common. And uh, even today, there's there's pushback on believers being God's sole possession. We are, we are God's possession. We are his children, his family. Um, I, of course, uh, I, I'm always telling you something about my, my father, my mother, my growing up days. But there, my father had a vision for his family. And I, I would say to you, every father and, and, and mother or whomever, they have a vision for the family. God has, has this vision for us, and he wants us to walk it out. And in this amazing vision that we are to keep the family's name and reputation, we are to keep the truth of the family and not let other things um, direct, divert us. We're not to let those other things divert us. I'm so excited about being a believer. Uh, it has not gotten old to me. I mean, I, as, a, as a young kid, I, I love science fiction movies. I, I don't know. I love my cowboy movies, too. They were number one. Science fiction, science fiction was number two. And, and, I, and I would love to just imagine all these, um, these amazing things and the machines talking and taking over. And now I'm living it, you know, to where everything is a machine. Uh, but I, I, I want us to draw our attention to the fact that since we belong to the family of God, our first responsibility is always to the family. It's to the family. And our job, our responsibilities also are that we should represent or represent the family to the whole world. That is, this is what God's family looks like. This is what God's people do. And this is how we uh, persevere. This is what God wants. And so Paul starts out, and I won't get into too much of it in Romans 1.16. He starts out by saying, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I am not ashamed. Um, would anybody be willing to admit at any juncture in your life, were you a little ashamed? Uh, uh, my hand is going up. Uh, some of you have never been ashamed. That, that is amazing, but I've been a little bit ashamed because I was like the sore thumb, and I didn't want to be the sore thumb. I wanted to be like everybody else, and so I had some shame. But Paul says emphatically, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Now, I can say today, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And then Paul tells us he's, uh, why, as it were, he says, for it is the power of God, for it is the power of God uh, to salvation for everyone who believes. It's the power of God. So, so this amazing God power is at work in salvation. So that means that earthly things can give you a semblance of what God is talking about, but they can never adequately show you what God is talking about in his power. Nothing of the earth can adequately show you because God's uh, what he's talking about here, because God's power is greater uh, than nuclear weapons. It's greater than. <clears throat> Amen. And he says, so it is the power of God to salvation. So what he wants us to know is that God exerts this thing called salvation and or this person who is salvation, he exerts him, he brings him forth with great power. And nothing is able to stop this one who is salvation. Salvation is not just an act, Paul is saying. It is a person who comes to live, an eternal person who comes to live in us to give us eternal life. And um, then he says the gospel 
For in this gospel, this good news of salvation, by the way, I want to just take a little swipe at this. It's not good news if the enemy can wrestle it from me. It's not good news. But so it, it, for in it, the, the, the gospel, the, self, uh, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. The just shall live by faith. And God has made it uh, our reality to live by faith. Let's look at Colossians. Um, let's look at Colossians 2, uh, 4, verses 2 through 6. And I will move on somewhat quickly because I think I've done those uh, maybe uh, uh, earlier. He says, continue earnestly in prayer. And I saw this and I thought it needed some reiteration. Um, I was never a public school teacher and um, um, they, they would handle this a lot differently than I do. But uh, I want to just break it down a little bit for us in that you and I are to be, uh, we are to present the gospel and we are to ourselves be a presentation of what the gospel looks like. Does that make sense to you? You know, so when they see us, they ought to see holy people. I've told you about my childhood, and I saw holy people, holy people. I, I almost burst, I had a little emotional moment here uh, when I see, and now I see a lot of our kids uh, who are walking, and they walk beautifully, and I see a lot of them. But there's one little girl uh, that, that wa- even walks like the, the old, what we call the sanctified people. And that's Jade, wherever she is. She, she even walks like them. And I, I'm, every time I see her, I say, it looks like one of those sanctified women. What I'm saying is God wants us to so comport ourselves that we are walking in holiness and are not trying to walk in holiness. We are just walking into it as a result of what God has done in our lives. We're just walking in it. We're not pretenders. Amen. Give the Lord a better hand. So Paul tells us how to do that. He says, continue earnestly in prayer. Now, there is not one of us here, I'm sure, that can say, I pray entirely too much. (laughs) I don't think there's anybody here who can say that. I pray just too much, Pastor. You don't know. You know, sure, I pray when I'm going to H-E-B and coming back or doing whatever. But he says, continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. This is what God wants us to do. So in order to present the gospel well, in order to be a presentation of the gospel, we must have deeper and better prayer lives. Continue earnestly in prayer. Now, that's wonderful. Being vigilant in it, very watchful in it, with thanksgiving. Meanwhile, praying also for us. He's always inviting the churches, pray for me. Pray that God would open to us a door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in chains. Now, he says, I need need your prayers in order to preach the mystery of Christ, and, and so I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about the mystery of Christ. What does that look like? Decades ago, the Lord gave me words, and I'm not trying to, to raise my stock by saying that. I just want you to know it's not something that I'm reacting to. Uh, it was something that preceded this. And many de- decades ago, that we were, he was going to use you, all, this church and all of us, to do uh, great things around the world. And I remember saying to the Lord, I said, this ragtag bunch, no, no, you weren't here, many of you weren't here. <laughs> All right, wasn't you, I promise you, wasn't you. And I said, uh, well, it may have been a few of us. But, but, but I said, this ragtag bunch, I didn't mean that disrespectfully, I just meant that we just didn't look like people that God could use like that. And he said, watch. And, I, and I'm, it's been amazing. And I know some of you are still here, but <laughs> thank you. I hope you're here after tonight. But so, so we need prayer if we're going to speak the mystery of Christ because where, where we go, wherever, even in this city, even in this state, wherever we go to preach the gospel, we get much pushback from Christians. Yeah, they already know what they think they should know, and they, are, they, are, they, are, it become, they have become enemies, as it were, to a new understanding. 
Yeah. So we need prayer if we're going to give the proper presentation of the gospel. And he says, also give, uh, pray earnestly, uh, continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant, watchful, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. So he says, okay, it's, it's, yes, I, I want to speak the mystery of Christ, but I must make it clear. I must make it visible, as it were. I want to make it palpable to, to b- believers. He says, but I can do that as you pray. If you don't mind if I do a, a couple of names, I could name a lot of you. I was talking to uh, sometime months ago, maybe a year ago or so, I was talking to uh, Brother Robert and, and his wife, Dahlia. And I said, oh, do you have anybody specially praying for you? I said, no. I said, N- you are it now. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you are it. And they have agreed every time we leave, and even before, they are praying earnestly. And we had such a breakthrough. I mean, I, I, don't, I, I almost don't want to wait until global impact. Just, just take advantage of it right now and tell you all. It was a, an amazing breakthrough, a major breakthrough. With a whole people group. How wonderful. How wonderful. But these things happen as we pray. And then Paul says, walk in wisdom toward those who are outside, redeeming the time. Sometimes we don't, we don't treat unbelievers right. We just don't treat unbelievers right. We want to treat them like they are knowingly against the gospel, we, we, or we treat them like, oh, you've got something to share with us. You know, to the, to, uh, but to the degree that they don't. I mean, I want to say they don't have anything to share with me about Christ if they're an unbeliever. If they're an unbeliever, then I'm, I am not following an unbeliever because they don't know the way of the cross. All right? So, so I'm going to lead them, but I'm going to treat them like they are, have great value. And we need to learn the difference as believers. And then, then you don't have to say everything what you feel. Paul says, let your speech always be with grace. Let it be seasoned with salt that you may know how you ought to answer each one. So we don't have to tell unbelievers off. We want to win them. We want to show them Christian charity. We want to be kind to them. And this is what he is saying. So he wants us to continue earnestly in prayer to uh, be devoted to prayer, to be constant in prayer, and to be steadfastly attentive to it. When you pray, do you see your prayers answered? Are you seeing your prayers answered? This is what God wants. And he says, when you are praying and you are vigilant, you will be cautious. You will keep awake. You will be watchful as you pray. And then you will know that God has done something great through your praying. Amen. So so let's uh, look at I want to go now go back to Colossians uh, chapter 1. I want to go back. We started with verse chapter 4. Let's start. Let's continue with verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 24. So he's speaking of Christ's body. He says, which is the church, he says. The church, which is the church of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. So you and I have an an obligation to fulfill the word of God. The the word of God has been spoken, and you and I need to walk in the fulfillment of the word of God. I am so excited when I read Bible prophecy, and I see that we are fulfilling Bible prophecy. This is so amazing. You and I all ought to be acutely aware that I'm either fulfilling Bible prophecy uh, to the positive or to the negative. He says here, uh, um, let me go over again. I always stop at these commas. He says, so we are speaking of, speaking of Christ's body, which is the church, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. The mystery which has been hidden, say it with me, has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. So it's always revealed to the Saints first. And he says, to them, God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery. What, are, what is the wealth of this 
uh, of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. He said, this is, this is so mind-boggling. This is overwhelming. We human beings seem to think that human beings, that's it, you know. We, we, we're, if we think that we are all that wow, 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 we must be comparing ourselves to the lowercase, to the animal kingdom. You know, listen, this, this is why I say that. This is why I say that. Is that I don't think I deserve God in me. I don't think I deserve it. Now, if you think you deserve it, you're a lot better off than I am, and maybe you can share with me your revelation. But I think God, I should think this clay, I could use another word, but this clay now has God within. I mean, that ought to just make you go, wow, man. That ought to make you say, I want to be better for God. I want to, I want to be very pleasing to God. That's how, how I feel. I feel like, God, you are the great one, and you came to live in this vessel of clay. This man was made from clay, sand, dirt. I was trying to avoid that D word. But are you with me, following me? Listen, he says, this is what God willed. He says, to them... To us, God will to make known what are the riches or the wealth of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the expectation, the hope, the expectation of glory. He says, so God thought it a, a wonderful thing to live in these vessels. That, that is mind-blowing. So when we present the gospel, let's present the gospel in a way that honors him, totally honors him. And we ought to just say, God, I'm thankful that you, you chose me. I want to thank you that you chose to live in people. Otherwise, God would have been outside. We would be no better than a tree or a stump or a rock. But God says, no, I'm going to live in you. And, and this is wealth that the world doesn't have. Nor do they know. Nor do they know. It says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Then Paul says, him we preach. Him we preach. And so we don't preach about him. Well, we can say that sometimes, and it's, it's positive. But we really preach him. We're always showing him who he is. We're showing who he is. And then, of course, when we think of hope, we don't think of hope as in wishing, but it's joyful, confident, confidence, joyful expectation, uh, and really primarily it's joyful expectation of eternal salvation. And Jesus himself is called the author of hope, the author of hope. Let me read First Timothy chapter 1, uh, verse 1, and then I'm going to make a few comments and then we'll, leave, we'll stop tonight. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God, our Savior, and the Lord Jesus Christ, our hope. So Paul talks about Jesus Christ being the determined end. He is the beginning. He is the alpha. He is the omega. He's the beginning and the end. But he is the end of all things in that when you and I have Jesus, we have God's first and we have God's last in us. We're going nowhere except to the throne. And, and we'll, we'll end in these few verses, and I will read them, and then we will not say much about them. Hebrews chapter 6. Let's start in verse 17. Thus God, Hebrews 6, verse 17. Thus God, determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel. Can we just define immutability? Uh, oh, you, you, you got it. You got it. Unchangeable. Who else said? He changed. Oh, changeth not. We got the KJV version. We got the KJV. Yeah. He doesn't change. He doesn't change. Immutability of his counsel. So when God says something, you can't change it. There's nobody can change it. God's not going to change it because he doesn't, he doesn't quote unquote, act before he thinks in a sense, you know. God thinks, he, he, he does act, but he thinks. 
And he says the immutability of his counsel, because once God says something, that's it. It's not a, there's not an approximation there. And, and he says, but he still confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things, two unchangeable things, in which it is impossible for God to lie. God spoke. God gave an oath. It is impossible for God to lie that we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul. Now, this, the hope that God has given, the hope of salvation is a reality. It's not something that's going to elude us. It, this is ours forever. God didn't make a mistake when he entered your heart, when he came unto you and said, now you're mine. It's, it, he says this hope we have is like an anchor of the soul, because sometimes in our minds we can get messed up. Sometimes we can become doubtful. Sometimes we become fearful. He says, but this hope, Christ is our hope, but he's like an anchor that holds us in place. Because this is what I know, that God has made an oath, and it's impossible for God to lie. And so you and I are his forever. It'd be like our parents saying, you, you don't belong to me. Yeah, you say, yeah, sure. This hope we have is an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the veil. Now, if you can imagine the, 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 the temple and the Holy of Holies, this anchor g goes behind that veil. It holds steadfast. This is God, the creator of the universe, this is where he is. So your, your reality is tied to him forever and ever. And nothing unholy can go there. No lie, nothing deceitful. And he says, where the forerunner has entered for us. So you're, you're, this is where your hope is. It's in God where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus having become high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. It's what Paul is saying, that Jesus, there will be no change in priesthood, that Jesus has saved you, and Jesus, since he lives forever, will always keep you. He'll keep you forever and ever and ever and ever again. And we're going to need this. We're going to need to know that we know that we know that God has saved us and that there's no clause, I gotcha. You know, there's no, I gotcha clause. You know, you're going to go to hell now. No, this is an impossibility. We have been saved uh, through by the blood of Jesus. And the Bible says the forerunner, as it were, he, he didn't send his uh, blood through somebody from Aaron's priesthood. They were bringing animal's blood. So Jesus took his own blood into the Holy of Holies. And that's what, why, how he rescued us and forever and ever. And so the presentation of the gospel is a, is a sure presentation. It's one that could never change. And let's walk this out in Jesus' name. Sister Steph. Day and night, night and day, let him center us. Day and night,
Amen, everybody. Listen, we're going to be going in just a few minutes, but I want to assure you, those of you who are saved, you know, you are anchored, you are held to, in place through Jesus Christ. And, you know, m my wife was talking to Commander, Lieutenant Commander Erica. Um, she was, so these big ships, they have more than one anchor. But God didn't need more than one anchor. God just has one anchor. And it goes behind the veil where Jesus is. And the reality is that can anybody go there and pull the anchor up? It's just an impossibility. And this is what God wants you to know. He wants you to know that you know that you know he's got you. It doesn't matter what happens in your life. He's got you. And remember in the Old Testament, I understand that they would, I'm looking at you, doctor. I understand that they would tie a rope around the high priest like ankles. So if, in case he got in there and he was unworthy and, and God, God smote him. I'm going to use the word smote. And God smote him. They weren't going to go in there and get him. They were going to pull him out. So what God is saying to all of us with that picture, I never saw it before that clearly before tonight. But with that picture, God is saying is that I've got you, I've got you, I've got you. And he is saying that I don't need a backup plan because I gave you my best I gave you Jesus. Don't believe this stuff. Just know, hold on to, they used to say, hold on to God's unchanging hand. Because he is your anchor. He's not going to be moved. And don't, don't, don't even feel like, well, I knew all of that. Well, know it again. And know it deeper. I knew my numbers in first grade kindergarten. I knew all my numbers, but I didn't know all those numbers could have brackets, parentheses. I didn't know that. And that's as far as I care to go right now. <laughs> know him deeper. You're going to need it. And somebody you meet is going to need it. Now I want to ask you, if there's anybody in the house, you've heard the, the word of God, and you want, you say, well, Pastor, I want to give myself to Jesus tonight. I'm going to give him my whole heart. I want him to have all of me tonight. If that is you, would you just wave, wave at me, raise your hand. You want to come to the Lord. Come on again, brother. And anybody else, you want to come to the Lord? Anybody? Yeah, y'all can come on in and just bless her. Yes, anybody else want to want to come? You, you want to give your heart to Jesus? Now, online, online there, if you are watching online. Pastor, you can come on. If you want to, if you're watching online, you can write to our coordinator, our moderator, and she will lead you to the Lord. Just tell her that you're online and you want prayer. She'll lead you to the Lord. If there's anybody you want prayer, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll pray with you. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Come on. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Yeah, yeah. If you want, this, this is your. This is an opportunity for you. Still early. It's still early. We're, we're not going to keep you here all night, but it's still early. We'll just go ahead and lead on prayer. Pastor. Yes. If you want prayer, you come, and, and somebody will pray with you quickly and effectively. Quick, quickly and effectively. They'll pray effectively for you. Let's do it. Let them pray for you. They're going to pray quickly and effectively. Let's just come to them. They're all anointed. If they say something strange, you let me know. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yes. Bless you, Lord. Yeah, we're going to pray for you.
thank you, Lord. So it's, it's time to go. And, uh, you know, anytime, you know, church is over and the fast food restaurants are still open, you not stay too late. So don't worry about it. So let us prepare to go now. And we would like for you to lift your hands to the Lord and want you to bless your brothers and sisters. Like, I want you to really see yourself blessing them by saying, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And the Lord give you his peace. In Jesus' name, I bless you. Go with God, everyone. We love you all.